welcome back to Libib's booktube channel. My name is Kaylin. Welcome back for another Thursday bookish video. And today, <laughs> I got a video for us. I am going to crack open my cold adult beverage. And I'm going to talk about the worst books that I read in 2015 through 2020. I thought doing a five year span of the worst books I read would be such a fun video because I love talking about the books that spark all this wonderful joy in my life. But my favorite thing to do is talk about the books that I do not like. So cheers, we're gonna take a sip and we're gonna dive into this hectic video. <sighs> These books are in no particular order, but these are the books that I just cannot stand. Like no matter what, like at the end of the day, I hate these books. So coming up, number one is Scorch Trials by James Dashner. This is the second book in the Maze Runner series. And I had a lot of issues with not only the book, but with also the movie. And um, let me dive into the movie real quick before I get into the book. I enjoyed and loved The Maze Runner, and I thought the movie was a good adaptation. The second movie adaptation, horrible. I hated all the characters. It was one of the worst movies that I've ever watched in my entire life because for a brief moment, I was sitting there in excruciating pain being like, why can't I shut this off? Like, I just couldn't shut it off. I just couldn't look away, but it was so annoying and so aggravating. And I think that transfers over to the second book rather really well because we're just marching through we're just marching through a desert and trying to find the next spot to safety and then you get the death cure which i thought was better than the scorch trials but the scorch trials really hated the movie worst movie i have ever watched so it was the worst movie and the worst book it definitely suffers from the second book slump. You have your trilogy, but the second book is always the worst. Not only that, but I didn't realize how bad it was going to be. I felt like Thomas was annoying. There wasn't enough thrilling or suspense stuff that we got in the Maze Runner originally. And it had such a horrible, horrible ending. Did not like. Zero out of 10 would recommend. So that's the first book on my five year span that I just, I cannot stand. Next up is The Crown by Kiara Cass. The original trilogy, The Selection, and then we have the spinoff um, duology which is the crown and the air and whatever. Anywho, did not like this book. I mean, I really didn't like all the books in the end. Like they were quick, easy, fun reads. Great, three stars, average, but I had the problem with this book the most. I felt like it was super short. The story couldn't get fleshed out to its full potential. And it felt like I was reading a worse version of Pretty Little Liars. It was just, ugh. Eh. We got back to the annoying love triangle, which was just infuriating. Like I read about it in the selection trilogy. I did not need to read about it here. It was just poorly done. I didn't care for it. And the last 50 pages were just dumpster fire garbage nonsense. Didn't really care for it. Didn't really like it. So at the end of the day, that's why it made this list. Next up is going to be Return to the Dark House by Lori Stolores. This is the second and final book in this duology. And the first book, Welcome to the Dark House, amazing. Loved it. Hooked, scared, and petrified. The second book had the least amount of effect on me. I did not care for this book. I had such high hopes going into it, but they disappointed me. Nothing really happened in the book. It wasn't spooky. It wasn't thrilling. All the highs and the awesomeness that happened in the first book disappeared in the second book. And I think all the spooky stuff that happened in the first book just went away into the wind. The main character's obsession also over this boy was just incredibly like cringy, annoying, and like I said, frustrating. And at the end of the day, we, um, spoiler alert, didn't end up finding the killer. So what the fuck was the point? <laughs> what was the point of this book? Next up is The Merciless 2. The Merciless is hands down one of my favorite books of all time, which we'll get to that in another video. But The Merciless 2, yikes, yikes, yikes. Like, oh, like the first book, I feel like the spooky books are great as first books and then just don't create the rest of the series. I think that is what I personally have an issue with is that every other book in the series cannot 
like lead up to the first book's expectations. However, The Merciless 2 by Daniel Vega, mm, not for Kaylin. I had just moved back to Iowa at this point and I was in the biggest bookish lump and life slump of my life, so that did not help. It was a complete 180 from the first book. No spooks, very disappointing. The storyline was just like, what? No action or horror scenes. It was just a girl being locked up. And the biggest point as to why this book is on this list is I skimmed read some of this book. I skim read. I never ever ever in my life skim read. I don't believe it's a thing. I just read a book from start to finish. I don't skim read, but this was the first book I started skim reading in because I was like, can we just get to the end already? Like it was that bad. Next up is a recent book that I read, which is Victor and Nora, A Love Story. And I haven't even done a review on this. I really want to, but it's more of a bash slash rant, which I'm trying to not do, but this book was awful. Also, this book is by Lauren Miracle, and I also read her other um, DC Comic Inc. book as well. I think it was about Batgirl or Catwoman or whatever. And there was no amount of like joy in reading that book either, but I wanted to give her a second chance to see what she could prove writing wise. I didn't like her writing style then, and I don't like it now, and I don't like it ever probably. Well, I just felt that the story was very weird. Like I wanted to know the backstory of Victor and all that fun jazz, but this book was just not it. But the characters were absolutely awful and the writing was horrific. <laughs> Nora talked as if she was a baby slash small child and that drove me up the wall of insanity. The plot was meh. There was this one section of the book where our characters have their parents go away and so Nora invites Victor over and they're in high school and they are doing the sexiness. And the next page, honestly, quite frankly, made me want to vomit. Like I was so cringy, I had to message my friend Mesa about how much I wanted to vomit. It was just like, oh yeah, we're gonna go for round three, four, five, and oh blah blah. And I'm like, you know what? Sex in high school, not like this, I'm sorry. <laughs> It just was so cringy, so gross, and then Nora has her little baby talk also in it, and it just, it did not mesh well with me. Mm-mm. Ugh. <sighs> I just want to gag thinking about it. Next up is Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell, and this was one of the worst poetry books I've ever read. The poetry, like, here is like Twitter, Instagram poetry, here's like the really good stuff. Yeah, no, this was like, like crash and burn, like to the center of the earth. Like, I did not like any of the poetry. I thought it was very bad, very poorly written, didn't really have any meaning, couldn't really relate. I think I booked like, marked like maybe, maybe four poems, probably only one if I'm being honest. And it was just like the bottom of the barrel for Instagram poetry nonsense. The only plus to this book though was the jellyfish drawings in it and that was kind of it. I just, I did not like it. And last but not least, drum roll please. That was the poorest drum roll I have ever done in my entire life. But Bad Call by Steven Weffenfels and I got this arc, I either got this book at BookCon or ALA, can't remember, it was back in the summer and like years ago when I got an art copy when public events were a thing, but I decided to give this book a go. I was like, oh, this looks spooky, thrilling, enticing, and it was anything but that. This was at a point where like, my eyes like couldn't read books, like they hurt so bad, but I was like suffering my eyeballs for this book. I honestly wished all these characters could have gotten eaten by a bear. So it's about these like four or five characters, young adults that end up going on this last minute trip up into the mountains and suddenly there's this bad snowstorm, then there's this bear and someone has to kill someone and there's an ax and blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't care. I don't care to go on to any more details, but it just, I wished all the characters would have gotten eaten by a bear or turned into human icicles. Like it, that would have been a much more interesting plot than what was happening. All the characters were straight up annoying. There was a girl there and like all these guys were like goo goo gaga and or, or, and I'm just like, cut it, cut it for me. I don't, 
get to the good stuff, get to the thrilling, the suspense, the, <gasps> and there was none of that moment for me. I didn't care for the multiple point of views either. And so eventually like I made it to the end of the book and it was just such a rough ride. Zero out of 10 would recommend, wished everyone would have gotten eaten by a bear, would have made for a much more interesting plot line. The writing could have probably been better. It would be gory, horror, spooky, and then the book could have been shorter. It would have been a great, great thrilling conclusion for this book. Well, anyways, that's gonna be the books that I just went on and bashed from 2015 through 2020. Those are all the worst of the worst that I have read. Anyways, what are some of the worst books you have read? Let me know in the comment section down below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys next week for a new bookish video.